Alright, hello and welcome to another episode for MC Airsoft. I am Mark, and today we're going to be discussing quick and easy game modes that you can do in uh, Airsoft. Now, why am I discussing this? Well, I did the video the other day on uh, paintball parks, and one of the reasons I didn't like paintball parks generally is they don't give it enough attention, so it tends to just be unbalanced team deathmatch and all of that. Um, so I thought I'd elaborate on that a little bit more. Um, and so first this, uh, thing I want to talk about is balancing, right? How do you balance teams? Well, there are a couple ways of doing it. Um, so you can give a team a harder objective, right? Um, if you have a, an ex let's say you have 12 players, um, and you have four experienced players and eight uh, intermediate or non-experienced players. Uh, so the non-experienced players can be on defend, uh, defend, and the experienced players can be attackers. But whatever you're doing, the experienced players should have more limited lifespan, right? They should have to move more carefully, and they should have to... Um, be at a significant disadvantage. Now, is that fair? No, but is it fair to run it the other way? Also no. Um, and the experienced people are probably gonna come back where the inexperienced people probably won't at that point. Um, you might ruin their time out. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, like I said in the other video, you can also stick advanced players with beginners, um, kind of show them the ropes, but also it's going to kind of slow them down a bit. Um, how much? Well, that's uh, really dependent on the players and how well they communicate, how well they can teach and move and shoot at the same time. So uh, I can't really say, but uh, it's better than just having advanced or advanced and intermediate on one side. Um, you know, in airsoft, you also have to worry about balancing of uh, equipment. Um, the, whoever's organizing the game should know who's running what guns, who's running what type of guns, um, whether that's, um, you know, it's an AG uh, or like maybe uh, two guys with M4s, but one has a DSG, right? Or one has an HPA, um, whereas the other just has a rental. Obviously, those two things are not the same. Uh, on the other side, you might have a basic off-the-shelf um, saw, and the other person might have, again, HPA, DSG, something upgraded, right? Those two things are not equal. The, honestly, the, unless there are certain other rules in play, uh, the, uh, the DSG, the upgraded gun, has the advantage. Um, so the ref should know what kind of guns they have because they should be chronoing them and they should be asking like, oh, is that HPA? Is that like, what is that? Um, you know, if there's any kind of confusion and it is up to the ref to team balance, right? Uh, team balance is very important. It's honestly what can make or break a day, right? Um, now, there is a milsim that I'm going to uh, shortly that uh, the team I'm on has a significant personnel disadvantage, personal number disadvantage, communication disadvantage so far from what I've seen, possibly weapon disadvantage, we'll see. Um, but what we're hoping is through certain things that we're doing as a team, we can kind of um, fight back against that, right? Uh, and even the odds of it, we'll see. Um, of course, when videos for that come out, I'll do a full breakdown on that event. Um, and I'll be doing a gear loadout video and all that stuff. So it is just a one day event, but should be fun. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so the first thing you got to think about is balance. Um, one of my favorite things to do if it is a small group is ask the beginning like the newest person the beginner uh what who do they want on their team you know uh especially if it is 
a small game, um, you know, four or six people, ask the beginner who do they want on their team, let them pick, because then at the end of the day, they might still lose, they might not pick the right person, but they got to pick, so they got some say in it. They're not going to hate the field as much as they maybe hate their decision, right? Um, and if they pick the most experienced person, then that is the newest person with the most experienced person. So again, that kind of evens things out. Um, now, as a more experienced person, you should realize that if you don't have fun during that one game, there's probably a few more games that day, and you can always come back next week or some other time that month or the next month, you can come back, right? So you should realize the more games you get in, your percentages of fun to not fun games, you know, hopefully it's swinging in the, in the realm of more fun than not fun, but, you know, there's always another game. So, yeah, um, that's something to consider if you are the more experienced person. Um, but yeah, balance should be the first priority when you're talking about these things. But you can also balance through the game mode. Now, realistically, um, Airsoft breaks down into three categories. Attack and defend, um, capture the flag, and team deathmatch. Now, you can skin capture the flag as capture the nuke, or um, capture the pre VIP, the hostage, whatever. Um, now, you could also have them just shoot the VIP, but, you know, that's, um, that's, and uh, that's a high value target game and that's a little bit different, uh, but still within the realm of capture the flag because you have to take a thing, or in this case, a person and move it to an objective. Um, which HVT I'm not really going to cover because one, you need more people. You need at least one more to sit out, right? Uh, and be the HVT. And two, doesn't really work on small fields. Um, because any field where you might just be able to spray across the field and hit the person you're trying to hit, you know, it's not going to work, right? So, um, that and you can def uh, set up a defensible skirmish line and hold that until they run out of time or, you know, try and be gutsy and rush you and get shot. So, things to consider. I don't really like HVT for small games. I think for big games, they're a great idea, uh, but you have to have enough people. You have to have a big enough space. Things to consider. Uh, so the first one, attack and defend. Uh, so it could be that you have to take and hold a building for X amount of time. You have to um, just maybe hold a building for X amount of time. Or you have to... Um, move and take an area of land that's maybe marked by a flag or something. Or you have to take a trench system. Or you have to hold uh, your base, which is a predefined area, um, for X amount of time. And this could be like a sabotage mission. You're holding it so you can plant the bomb, do the thing, or defuse the bomb, do the thing. Uh, but realistically, it's attack and defend. Um, now, like I was saying, uh, you might consider putting the more experienced people on the attacker side, giving them a limited amount of respawns, or on the defender side and limited amount of respawns. But in some way, they should be limited. But it's a good way of balancing things, right? You can give them the harder mission, give them limited respawns, and then they can get their little Alamo last stand kind of feeling. And at the same time, um, the uh, attackers aren't feeling overwhelmed. Um, so you might want to put the beginners on the attacker side so they can kind of control the pace of it, right? Um, so that's an idea. Uh, but yeah, attack and defend, they're fairly common. Um, you can think of them like domination games as well. Um, but that's a little bit of something we'll talk about later. Uh, so the next one, capture the flag. It could be you're capturing a nuke, you know, a briefcase bomb, whatever the case is. Uh, you're capturing, I've done uh, all these examples I give or games I've played in the past. 
Uh, so you could do like a briefcase bomb, you could do a tactical nuke kind of thing. You could do just flags. Um, I personally have in my car when I go to the airsoft games locally, I bring two orange construction marker poles that have little banners on the top of them. Um, and so we can do capture the flag, pretty simple. Um, you could do an intel based game, right, where it's you're going to find, you know, a envelope full of intel, something of that nature, and then bring it back and not to capture the flag or just go get it and, that, and maybe take a picture of it. That's a uh, more elaborate, but still capture the flag. Um, what are some other ones um, you could do? You just get creative with it, right? Um, I'm drawing a blank on any others, but um, as long as you get creative with it, um, and then there's a few different ways you can do it. You can do uh, take and you can do grab the flag, bring it back. You can put the flag in the middle, have the two teams fight over it. That one never works out well because one side either, um, either both sides just play team, team deathmatch or one side gets wily and runs up grabs the flag and runs back and it's just a matter of who's faster right so <clears throat> i really suggest that one but you can go uh we have team a has the flag team b has to capture it and bring it back or just capture it or uh, capture it and hold it for x amount of time but again um, that's uh attack and defend and that's something we'll talk about in a minute um you know, uh, or there's two flags and whoever has both flags at the same time wins. You know, you can do all sorts of things and then skin it as other things like, you know, like I was saying, briefcases, uh, envelopes of intel, those kind of things, right? As long as you get creative, the more creative you get, the more people get into it. And even if you don't really have a milsim crowd, as long as you don't have the speed QB specific crowd, which again, nothing wrong with it, they're still playing airsoft and hopefully they're doing it safe, but um, it's just that, you know, they're looking for a different kind of gaming experience, but anyone else is going to love that, uh, even if they're not so into the Milsim side. <clears throat> and then there's the team deathmatch, pretty self-explanatory. Again, it this that one's a little harder to balance out for teams, but you know, it's doable, it's very doable. Um, you know, one side has less players or um, less respawns or something of that nature. You know, um, generally team death matches devolve into some variation of attack and defend or uh, a revolving attack and defend uh, where one uh, team A is attacking, team B is defending. And then halfway through the game, there's enough people on one side dead that it's now switched. Now with that, I will say that it should always be run with a minimum, uh, limited amount of respawns. Now the thing is, as a game designer, game runner, game organizer, whatever you want to call it, you can do, hey, uh, both sides have five lives uh, total, so four respawns, whatever, uh, 15 minute clock, knowing full well that it's not going to go 15 minutes, especially on a big field, um, but it gives the players an objective. Because if it's just, hey, go kill each other. How many respawns? Unlimited respawns. Well, then what's the point? What am I trying to do other than, I guess, not get shot for 15 minutes? Or shoot a bunch of people for 15 minutes, but they're just going to respawn and that invalidates everything I just did? And what's the point? So, even if it's fake, let's say, um, even if you're faking it, you can still give purpose to a team deathmatch. Um, and then, oh, nobody won, let's reset for another one, the next one, and then people can talk crap back and forth and all that, and it's great. Now, what I've been alluding to is combination games, right, um, where it is some variation, some amount of attack and defend, team deathmatch, and capture the flag all together. So a good example of this, and you see it a little more with milsims, because you break down most milsims until you get to like LARP, kind of more LARP oriented stuff. But most milsims, if you break it down, uh, they are some combination of those three, uh, each mission. So um, 
you could go take a building. So now you're playing attack and defend. Um, and then you have to hold that building um, until maybe someone gets a document, someone finds a document. Maybe it's just five minutes and then uh, you have to extract, right? Um, so taking the building is attack and defend. Ex holding the building is team deathmatch um, or attack and defend going the other way. Um, and then extracting is capture the flag. You have to get to a certain point. Now, there's no, maybe not an actual flag. Maybe there is some kind of intel or something, but yeah. Um, another one is um, you can run um, some kind of variation of capture the flag with team deathmatch where there's two flags or one flag or whatever the case is but then there's limited amount of respawns so you could just kill each other make it easier to grab the flag and bring it back or uh, just kill each other and be done or uh, grab the flag and then that invalidates the other person of uh, the other team's lives or whatever um, so some variation thereof, right? Um, yeah, so that's, uh, you know, you can string those together and just get creative with it. Um, you could do, uh, like an ambushy kind of team deathmatch, right? Uh, leading into, um, you know, hey, whenever team A takes 10 casualties, they then get a blip on the map that says they have to go take and hold that. Uh, they have to fall back, hold a place. Um, so then it becomes uh, as a defensible position, waiting for evac, things like that. Uh, however you want to play it, hold that defensible place for, say, five minutes um, while uh, Team B attacks them. And then Team A has to extract. So now it's the capture the flag kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, so there's a lot of different ways you can do it, and a lot of it, and especially at the bigger games, is going to be about telling a story. It's going to be, um, hey, we're on patrol, uh, and it's a team deathmatch kind of thing. We're shooting each other, uh, great, and we are, um, maybe killing each other until we get, uh, hey, this high-value target is over here. You have to get to the high value target and you have to um, grab a piece of intel off of him or ask him a question he tells you where something is. Then that leads you to a, an attack and defend situation, which then leads you to an extraction or capture the flag kind of situation. Um, so you can string them together in any way you want as long as it kind of makes sense, as long as it fits into whatever story you're trying to tell. But even on a small... Um, game you can still string like uh you you know limited respawn capture the flag so that's team deathmatch and capture the flag so there's two ways to win right um so um yeah there's uh, a lot of variations you can do with it there's a lot of ideas and different ways to play airsoft uh just make it interesting and people will love you for it um it doesn't take a whole lot like I said, I have a construction poles with banners on the top for Capture the Flag. People love playing Capture the Flag uh, because it's, again, it's a secondary objective, something some way other than just killing each other that you can win. Because frankly, just shooting at each other, especially on a confined field, gets real boring real quick. Um, so yeah, that's about all I wanted to say on that. So until next time, stay safe and stay hydrated.